Hello and welcome to our video on SCR systems and what's required for system implementation. Now this video has come about from a lot of our customers who uh, deal with the odd kind of SCR job every, every year or so. And what they ask us is they generally ask us what's included? What services do I need to install one of these systems? So hopefully this video will help clarify some of those questions. So this here basically shows the, the typical SCR system. So you have the engine, which is dirty exhaust, that's cleaned by our EcoCube system. Our EcoCube system also has a control panel, which will vary the rate of urea injection into the EcoCube unit. All of the items in this blue square would be supplied by Safety Power as part of our standard uh, implementation package. Now, what's required uh, by installers uh, or by the, the site services is we'd require a connection between the EcoCube and the control panel. What this is, is this is uh, urea would run through here, um, and there's also some wiring, which I'll get into in a later slide. And then the control panel, the control panel will require a urea supply, which I'll get into in more detail, as well as the compressed air supply, which I'll also get into more detail. And then we require a power supply. So we use 24 volts DC at 10 amps. The other thing that isn't shown here is typically we would require um, an engine load signal um, from the engine control panel to our control panel. So one of the most complicated parts is the urea storage and supply. Um, so this, this slide goes into that in more detail. Specifically, here's an excerpt from one of our drawings, shows our control panel. What we need is we need a urea supply into our control panel and a urea return back into the urea tank. Typically, we request a quarter inch stainless steel for our EcoCube line of products. Um, stainless steel is, is very important as urea reacts with copper. The other thing that would typically be uh, included in one of these systems or, or required is uh, an ultrasonic level sensor and a breather valve to make sure that the venting occurs properly. This is a more colorful diagram uh, that shows a lot of the same things. The real important thing here is that the urea tank and the control panel, uh, there's a pump inside this control panel that's standard in all our systems. It has the ability uh, to pump up to eight feet of suction head. So if this tank is located less than eight feet of suction head uh, away, then, then this, is, this is a very simple installation. If it's located more, I'll get into that into the next slide, how to do that. In terms of tanks, uh, there's a couple options for, uh, for emergency applications. You usually choose one of these, so you look at your runtime that you want. For a prime power, you're going to choose a lot more runtime. The materials are typically HDPE and stainless steel. Uh, we also would typically see single wall tanks or double wall tanks. Double wall tanks basically have an extra tank around uh, as a containment problem. So if there's ever a leak, it, it wouldn't spill over the floor. And one important thing to note is urea will freeze, so less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. Um, you're going to want to heat trace these ure urea lines, and you're also going to want to insulate and heat your tank if it's not in a conditioned environment. So this next slide shows the scenario of where we're more, the tank's more than eight feet of suction head away. So what we do is we add a booster pump. And now we have a supply line and a return line, and they're separated by a ball valve. And what this ball valve does is create a pressure differential. So we partially close that valve, uh, so there's a pressure differential between those lines, and the control panel uh, gets connected into the appropriate supply and return areas. And our typical booster pump can handle up to eight, 80 feet of, of suction head, or of uh, suction supply, sorry. Um, and that is more than adequate in, in most of the applications we've seen. If more is required, we can definitely uh, size a, a different pump. And I should say all of the items outside that blue box in that first slide 
uh, are optional items that we will normally provide um, with the exception of urea piping. Usually we don't do the urea piping because uh, it's very dependent on the location uh, and just easier done by the installation contractor. So this here, this shows a multiple SCR system. So it's, it's exactly the same. You have that booster pump. You get that 80 feet of suction head. And again, you can, you can basically uh, you know, uh, supply multiple units by just connecting the control panel to the supply into the return circulation line. Air compressors. So that really covers off urea supply. Air compressors are another uh, in, important thing. Um, you know, here's here's a typical air compressor. See the compressor in the receiver tank. Uh, here's another excerpt from our drawing. So our systems require for the EcoQ product line between 5 CFM and 10 CFM of clean, dry air. And um, again, these are the items that are typically involved in, in the air system. We will often provide optional pricing um, on, these, on these products. So you'd have the compressor, you'd have the receiver, you'd have a regulator to make sure that the pressure is where you want it. You'd have an air filter to, to clean the air, and you'd have an air dryer to dry the air so there's no condensation in the lines. And, and that's very important. And then you'd simply, um, you know, basically connect this using a half inch stainless steel tubing to our control panel and that would supply the compressed air. This diagram here, this shows uh, basically what is connected to the control panel. It, it looks kind of complicated at first glance, but it's actually really simple. So this here, this box represents the EcoCube junction box. Uh, so that's a junction box on the EcoCube. And this is the control panel. And here's kind of a wiring legend. So between the eco cube and the control panel, the only connections we require, you'll notice this is a Belden Cat 5. So it's a very standard, easily testable kind of cable. Um, and this is a very unique thing to safety power. So all we need is five Cat 5 cables, which are really easy to run. And then we need a 16 AWG uh, power uh, cable basically run there to supply some of the power on the items on the EcoCube. So that's fairly simple to, to run and operate um, or to install. The other thing is I mentioned the engine control panel. So typically we'd want an engine load signal. We'd also typically get power from the engine control panel. So again, um, those wires are basically shown. So we've got a 12 gauge uh, and 18 gauge and um, you know uh, there's a 16 gauge wire that would need to be run between uh, the engine control panel and our control panel. The other uh, two items would be the air compressor so we can control the air compressor if that's desired by the customer um, and that's what we require is a 16 gauge uh, connection and the urea tank um, you know if if people want us to have an alarm and, and read that ultrasonic flow meter, we can do that. That's, that's what would be required. Another thing that some customers want is BAS integration. And there's a couple ways to do that. So this, this basically shows that, that it's an option. And uh, if that's something you want, we can get into that in more detail in terms of how to connect that. Anyways, I hope this video has helped. Um, if you have any questions on, on what's involved, uh, please feel free to contact me or contact anyone at our Safety Power office.